just making sure you can see me and hear me on this Monday morning. Uh, sorry I wasn't here last Monday. If you were, uh, it was the Easter weekend and I was not around. Uh, but once you get on here, we'll let just a few seconds stop by here. And once you get on here, let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me okay, and we'll go ahead and get started. So on this Monday Guitar Motivation, what we're going to be doing is talking about uh, your picking technique a little bit and try and get that developed a little bit. I get a lot of questions from people asking me about developing their picking techniques. So again, I'm not gonna take a lot of your time today, but just give you a few things to think about, and we'll go from there. Christopher is here, Omar is here. Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for being here. Ronald is here, Bob is here, Gord is here. Awesome, thank you. Everybody can hear me okay? Jeff is here, Juan is here, Raj is here. X Metal 335 how you doing? Cool, so we got Arno is here, Lyle is here. Jason is here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. So we already have uh, almost 200 people on here, so uh, we'll just kind of get going. So what we're going to do today, for those of you that are just joining me, we're going to be talking a little bit about developing your picking technique. I get a lot of questions about this, and uh, you can move this into a, a speed sort of thing if you want to, but we're just going to talk about some things to think about a little bit. Hey, Sid. Uh, hey, Erling. Hey, Ed. So the first thing I want you to think about before we even get started here is we're gonna go through just a couple of fundamental things, so they might not be very exciting, but I think they're really important. Hey Martin, hey Hector. Uh, the first thing is the guitar pick that you're using. I really want you to think about this um, because it really does make a huge difference. Maybe not in the beginning stages of your, of your playing, but maybe it does. But for me, it, it makes a night and day difference on what guitar pick I'm using. And, and by that, I don't mean the brand necessarily, I mean the thickness of it, uh, the size of the pick, different kinds of things like that. Um, those are things that you want to think about a little bit. Now, I generally use these picks for, uh, they're Hawk picks, um, and they're kind of expensive, but the reason I use them is because they last so long, and I like the way they feel in my hand and the way that they, they feel against the string. So again, I'm not telling you you need to go out and buy some sort of expensive guitar pick. You do not. I'm just telling you, give some different guitar picks a chance. Um, if I run out of the Hawk picks, which sometimes I do, then what I wind up using are these uh, Dunlop uh, John Petrucci picks. Now, for many years, 15 years, I used Jazz 3 picks, if you know what those are, and I was absolutely addicted to those and uh, you know played with them live all the time, that sort of thing. And for some reason, I, I switched over at some point, and I realized that even though I have small hands, I actually enjoyed having a little bit larger guitar pick. And so I went back to having kind of normal size picks and now I don't use the Jazz 3s anymore, but the Jazz 3s were wonderful guitar picks for me for a long time. Now, the picks that I use generally are 2.0 millimeter. That's the thickness that I tend to use. Um, and again, none of this means anything because it doesn't matter what works for me. What's most important is what works for you, okay? So just think about that a little bit. But I do want you to understand that maybe the next time you go to a guitar store, buy some different picks and try them out. Now, uh, I always carry a variety of guitar picks in my pocket. So I've got, um, you know, the, the usual ones that I use. And then I always carry some thinner picks. Now, I never use thin picks on an electric guitar. Um, are you there, Steve? Diane? Hi, Diane. I am here. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, but when I play acoustic, sometimes it's really nice to have a little bit thinner guitar pick for strumming and things like that. Um, I don't always do that. Sometimes I'll just use my normal size picks, but I do like the sound of a little bit thinner guitar pick when I strum, but that's, that's here nor there because we're not really talking about that. Uh, I have tried the Super Grip before X-Metal. Um, th there's so many good guitar picks out there, but what I want you to think about again, is whatever works for you, but, but think about the size of the guitar pick and think about the thickness, how hard that guitar pick is and what works best for you, okay? And, and explore some things and figure it out because sometimes we'll hear someone like me say something and you go, oh, I should try that, and that's fine. But that doesn't mean it's gonna be right for you. And I learned a long time ago, the best way to approach any of this stuff is to figure out what works best for me, not what works best for a guitar player that I like or something like that. It's just, I gotta try things out until I find what works. So enough on that, but, but really think about that. Find what works for you. So the second thing is, is once you've found that guitar pick, for me, what makes a really big difference is I have to make sure that the point of the guitar pick is very sharp. I don't like a rounded guitar pick. Um, because it tends to sound swooshy to me 
when I'm picking. Now again, it depends on the style of music that you're playing. For me, because I play a little bit heavier style music and things like that, I like a, a sharper end. So it'll dig in a little bit. So I tend to throw guitar picks away quite frequently. And yes, I know, you know, there's all kinds of little tricks that you can sharpen them. For me, having a fresh guitar pick is very important. It's very, I, I don't know what it does for me, but it's very inspiring to have a new guitar pick in my fingers and, and play and it just sounds good and it feels good. And um, so that's something else too. If, if you don't have, you know, money to go out and buy a guitar pick, or maybe you're somewhere where you can't get some, you can certainly try the sharpen on the carpet and all that sort of thing. But for me, if, if, the, if the end of the pick has been kind of, you know, dulled up, I just get rid of it. And because I teach classes every once in a while where I teach uh, or where I live, I tend to keep all my guitar picks and then I'll give them to my, like, my beginning guitar students and things like that. Because, again, if they're just starting, they might not know what they want anyway. So I'll give them a bunch of free guitar picks and they don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that's the next thing is, is making sure that the point or the tip of that guitar pick feels comfortable for you, okay? So now let's go ahead and move in. So now when we start picking, okay, we have to understand that there's a few different places that we can pick from. We can pick from our elbow, we can pick from our wrist, or we can pick from our fingers. And sometimes you'll use a combination of these. There isn't one, you know, versus the other three. You just have to be aware of how this works. So when I'm playing slower, I think I tend to move more from my wrist and my fingers. And as I continue to speed up, I tend to lock a little bit more and most of it tends to come from my wrist like this. So just be aware that, hey Mike, hey, well there's Diane there again. Uh, Diane says, I like a flexible guitar pick, which is perfect. Again, everybody's different. But you'll see when I start showing you this why a harder guitar pick can make a difference. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll, not that I'll really be, you'll be able to notice, but let me get one of my thinner guitar picks and let me show you this, okay? So this is a pick that I might use on an acoustic guitar for certain things and not that you're really gonna be able to see this real great, but the pick is bendable. If I was to go to my hot guitar pick, you're not gonna bend this at all. It's not gonna bend at all. Okay, so when I, when I start trying to figure out how I'm going to pick this string, okay? Now again, I'm just telling you what works for me and then you need to adjust to what works for you, okay? But when I grab the guitar pick, this is a regular standard size guitar pick. I don't play by grabbing the pick in the center, okay? I grab the pick toward the, the tip of the guitar pick, okay? So again, I don't have a real great uh, example for this in the camera because it's going to be kind of hard to show you this but you know I don't I don't grab the guitar pick up here and I don't grab it in the center I tend to grab it towards the the very tip of the guitar pick okay so the rest of that guitar pick is kind of wasted for me okay which is, makes sense why I used to use um, th smaller guitar picks okay because with the jazz three I could grab it in the center and I was actually more toward the tip of the guitar pick anyway but again whatever works for you. So as I grab this, what I'm really cognizant of when I go to start picking this string is the fact that as I'm picking, I'm just using the tip of that guitar pick, okay? And if I wanna get in, dig in more, I can do that, I can dig in more. Um, there's l a little more pick on the string side than there is on the thumb side for me, okay? So my thumb is even closer to the tip of the pick than my, my middle or my first finger would be on this side, okay? But what I like is when I go to pick, as I pick, and we're gonna talk about palm muting and things too, the pick goes through the string and I'm done. If I use a thinner pick, the pick bends. So here's my string and I go to pick and the pick bends and then it flaps through the string. Okay, so, so it feels, because it's, it's a thinner guitar pick, it, it's not as tight for me, okay? Now if I was strumming, and that sort of thing, like I said, in an acoustic, I love the feel of that, and more so, I love the sound of it. I love the sound of a thinner guitar pick when I'm strumming an acoustic guitar or something like that. But in this case, what I'm looking for is really trying to get through that string. So when I go to pick, here's the string, here's the pick, okay? it pushes through and I'm done, okay? So if I think about backing off that guitar pick as I play, now again, here's the string, here's my guitar pick, okay? If I go all the way deep into that string and I try and play, I'm gonna have to really fight that whole string. But if I move back 
and I just start trying to pick the edge of that string with my pick. See the difference? If I push in, I'm gonna get more of that aggressive sound, and sometimes I do that, it depends. Okay, but if what I'm looking for, and I know some of you are, because I get these questions all the time, if you're looking for speed, you want less friction, right? You don't wanna fight. So if you can learn to take that guitar pick, and again, I would recommend trying to find something with a sharper point, and a thicker pick, and again, it doesn't have to be the thickest pick, it's just something that works for you, you gotta try these out. But as you're playing, you start exploring how much you wanna push in, we're gonna talk about pick angle and all that sort of thing too, but we're gonna start trying to push in a little bit and recognize the difference between picking on the tip of the guitar, or the string, and then pushing in, okay? So we wanna start being aware of that. So first thing is finding the pick. Second thing is, is finding the grip of the pick, finding what works best when you grip the guitar pick, okay? I grip more towards the tip of the guitar pick, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna to learn to relax everything as I play. I'm trying to relax my neck and my shoulder muscles, all that sort of thing as I play. So, so Diane, please understand that I'm not saying you should use a hard pick. What I'm saying is there's a benefit if you're trying to play faster because the pick will immediately go through the string. Now, if you push too far in, of course, you're gonna pull that string, right? So if you learn to play more toward the tip of the pick, you can then start and again, all you're hearing there is, is that I'm just pushing in more towards the string and it's creating more aggressive. So depending on the song, depending on the riff, depending on the situation, sometimes I will push in a bit more for that more aggressive kind of anthraxy thing. If I'm... You can very much hear the difference in the attack that I'm, I'm using when I play. And that can all be done. If I'm using a really thin pick, I really can't do that because the pick will just bend. So if I try and get more aggressive, I'm not gonna get aggressive. The pick's just gonna keep bending. But you know, as you move into a little bit thicker pick, it doesn't have to be a two millimeter like I'm using. Maybe you want something a little heavier, but or a little bit lighter, and that's okay. So now, let's talk a little bit, we talked about the elbow versus the wrist versus the fingers, and again, this is a natural thing that you, you have to work on, but just be aware of those. So now let's talk a little bit about palm muting before we get into pick angle, just so you understand what I'm doing here. So people ask about palm muting all the time. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the karate chop part of my hand, okay, and I'm setting it right where the string and the bridge meet. Okay, now I want you to listen to this because it's easier than, than just watching this. So if I move all the way too far back and I start palm muting or I start picking. See, now all of a sudden that karate chop part of my hand has started touching that string and it's deadening it a little bit. Now watch what happens if I keep going. Okay, now I'm getting an effect, but I'm not getting the pitch anymore. The actual physical pitch has changed. So if I was playing a song or something, what I'm playing now is a different pitch than maybe the band is playing, right? So I wanna move back. So what you wanna do on your guitar, you know, depending on if you're playing on this leg or, or this leg or whatever it might be, you wanna find that point where you're getting a nice, palm mute. Now again, just like with the pick, I can decide with that palm mute. Once I've figured out kind of where the ideal sound is, so I'm going to go right in here. See those two spots? I got one where I have more open voicing and one more closed voicing, if you will. Listen. And I'll use both of those quite a lot, depending again, again on what it is I'm trying to do. Uh, 
Coin Op says, I think he's talking to his Facebook live stream. I'm talking all over the place. So you might be on YouTube. You might be on various Facebook uh, channels. I'm all over the place. So right now. Okay. Now, what I can do with either one of those voicings, if you will, is I can decide, hey, Ozzy Mandias is here. Hello, Ozzy. I can start pushing in a little bit harder. Again, and I always call it anthrax, although... It might not be the band Anthrax, but you get the idea. So as I play... I can get more aggressive chunk if I push in just a little bit. Now, I'm using a floating tremolo system. So if I press too hard, I actually start pressing that tremolo down and it sharpens the strings. It, it, the, it raises the sound of the strings. So I have to be a little careful with that, where if I was using a standard bridge, I could get more aggressive with that. But this one, because it's got a floating tremolo, uh, I have to be a little bit, yeah, X-Metal says he's on YouTube. Yeah, everybody's all over the place, so. <laughs> Now I'm gonna, and hopefully that you can hear that wherever you are, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook somewhere, you can hear the difference between that aggression as I push in a little bit more and it gets a little bit a little bit more aggressive. Okay, so I'm not changing where I am. Okay, so understand that about palm muting is you can decide maybe you don't want that heavy of a palm mute, so you move back into that second voicing. And they are very, very, very close together. Okay, so I'm not, you know, using my thumb or something, I'm literally just using the karate chop part of my hand. Okay, and I'm not watching myself again I've been doing this for so many years but it's more of a feel thing so when I start playing if I decide I need a little less of that aggression I'll just slide my palm over a little bit and there I am or I'll move forward a little bit for a little more aggression and if I need even more I'll push in just a little bit more Ken is here representing the guitar zoom community which is awesome hey Ken See that? So I want you to explore these sorts of things. Again, step number one, finding the right guitar pick. It's size, it's hardness of a guitar pick, and then the point is really important. Okay? Um, if you were using like a Jazz 1 or a Jazz 2, for those of you who know that Jazz guitar picks, you know, those are very rounded, more for Jazz, right? And then as you get to Jazz 3, it starts becoming far more sharp. And again, please remember that a guitar pick only lasts so long. You know, if guitar picks are expensive for you, you might have to sharpen them different various ways. Or if you can, once you've used uh, you know, a pick long enough, you throw it away and you grab another one. Because I find myself, sometimes I forget because I just have guitar picks in my pocket and I'll grab it and I'll just be using that guitar pick. And then I'll realize that the reason it's, I, my playing is just off a little bit. And believe me, a guitar pick can really make this big of a difference. And then I'll realize that the guitar pick, the, the point is, is, has been, you know, shaved off because I've been using this so much. So then I'll grab a different guitar, pick something fresh out of the pack and go, oh, there it is. It feels way better, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So pick, and then we talk about whether we're moving from the elbow, moving from the wrist, or moving from the fingers, and sometimes you'll use a combination of those when you're picking. But it's okay to explore how each one feels when you're playing. Okay, and it definitely depends on the speed. If you're going a little slower, your pick attack is gonna change than when you're going faster, okay? So now we've got palm muting out of the way, so let's talk about the pick angle just a little bit. Now there's really two things that you can do with a pick angle. One is, is if you think about the pick turning this direction, up and down, and the other one is the wrist turning this way, okay? So when you pick, if you think about starting off, trying to play more kind of parallel to that string. And then what you can do is you can start exploring picking at a different angle this way, okay? To figure out again what feels best for you as you turn, okay? And then the big one for me though is turning this way, okay? You'll notice as I turn this way, the pick begins, begins to uh, become a, at an angle with that string versus now it's laying flat, it's literally laying on the string. And as I turn this up, now I'm almost at a T, okay? 
Now here's the problem. The more you turn your guitar pick this way, the easier it is to get through that string because there's less friction. If you think about it again, if the, the string is facing this way and the pick is laying flat, you've got to push through to get through that string. So if we think about playing more at the tip of the pick or the string, it's going to be easier. If we push that pick further in, it's going to be harder, right, to get through that string. If we turn the pick, there's less friction. But the problem is, is if you turn the pick too much, you're going to wind up getting more of just this swiping sound versus the percussion of a, of a palm mute or a pick. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm playing, now you'll notice that my guitar is already at a little bit of an angle, right? I'm not sitting exactly flat. I'm, I'm, I, the guitar is turned just a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep picking and I'm going to start turning this guitar pick this direction. Real quick, Teddy says, have you ever had problems where the pick turns between your fingers? Um, I have had that problem, but I'm going to be completely honest with you, I haven't had that problem in years. I used to have that problem a lot, um, and I think just with experience and practice, that tends to go away. But there are mechanisms you can get, you know, guitar picks that have... Uh, you know, chalk stuff on them, or they have raised lettering, or they have embedded stuff, or whatever, that's supposed to help you with all those sorts of things, and if they do, great. If it, if it works for you, that's all I'm looking for, okay? It doesn't work for everybody. Just because there's raised lettering doesn't mean it's going to feel better for everybody, but, but that some of those things can help with the pick turning a little bit, but I think as you, as you continue to do this, and you really develop the, the art of holding the pick and the technique of what you're trying to do with the pick, it all gets easier and it happens less. But I very much remember the guitar pick turning a lot when I was younger. I just don't, uh, I don't get that much anymore. So let me go back to this. So here I'm playing. You see, so as I turn, it becomes more scratchy sounding. And again, that might be something that you want in a particular spot. But if I'm trying to play fast and I turn the guitar pick, it, it doesn't really sound like anything. It just sounds really squeaky. I mean, you could, you could do anything and it doesn't really sound like anything. It's just kind of noisy. So you want to be careful not to turn the pick too much. You might turn it a little bit. Again, let me go to this angle. Maybe this will help you a little bit. Especially for a particular kind of thing. Like if you're trying to... I'm doing something like that. You know, I might turn the pick a little bit. But I gotta figure out what feels best to me when I'm playing, okay? So be aware of that. Again, you can turn the pick this way and even more importantly, turning the pick this way. And if you're doing this, you know, really sort of uh, aggressively turning that pick just so you can play fast, Understand you're sacrificing your tone a lot because it really doesn't sound very good. You're looking for some of that percussion. Okay, so now let's move on to the next thing. Once I've developed that idea, I can practice one of two things. I can practice down picking and I can practice alternate picking, okay? Mike, well, let me get to Mike's quote thing here. Turning the pick might help get some pinch harmonics. Yes, but for a different reason, Mike. The reason why that helps, okay, is because when you're, for a pinch harmonic, everybody, which he's talking about this. It's not because the pick is turned. It's because you're allowing the thumb to touch the string. That's how the harmonic happens. So it's not so much that you're turning the pick because the pick at, at an angle will help with that, although it sort of does, Mike. What really is the kicker for a pinch harmonic is the fact that the thumb the flesh of the thumb touches the string. So as soon as you push through that guitar pick, the thumb is sending that pick into a harmonic. If I just turn the pick, you can hear a little bit of that pinch, because you're gonna get that. But the harmonic itself actually comes from the flesh. 
touching the string. That's how you get that. You know, people think like pitch harmonic, you know, pinch harmonics don't, you don't need to press really hard. You just need to find the right spot here. My single is actually set really low because that's where I tend to pick. So I have my single coil down really low so I don't run into it with my guitar pick when I'm playing. So Diane mentioned that, just so you guys know. Here, I'll show you. There's Diane's comment. So that's what I was talking about. Um, anyway, so if that kind of helps, Mike, it's not that it doesn't benefit to turn it. Of course it does. But the thumb is really what sends it into overdrive when you're really trying to get that. <laughs> kind of pinch harmonic. So anyway, so back to what we were talking about. So if I take this now, what I'm doing, and I've been exploring the angle that I'm going, and then what I do is I start trying to alternate pick, which means I'm gonna down pick and up pick, and I really wanna try and get the same dynamic on both sides. So as I'm playing, I'm not worried about a metronome, that sort of thing right now, I'm just, thinking about relaxing all my muscles, thinking about that pick angle. You know, am I picking from my wrist? Am I picking from my fingers? What am I doing? Right, so think about that as you're playing. And what I'm really trying to do here is if I'm trying to increase speed is I'm dealing with the tone the, the, the angle that I'm hitting, the pick that I'm using, the, the tip of the pick, all that sort of thing. I'm thinking about hitting just the tip of that guitar pick. And in my brain, I'm thinking about trying to not leave the, pit, the string, excuse me. So as I play, I don't want... That might be okay for something that I'm doing, but if I'm trying to play faster, it's gonna slow me down. So I'm really cognizant about relaxing as I play, using just the tip of that guitar pick, and just trying to hit the tip of that relaxing, maybe turning the pick a little bit if I need to. But I really got to get control of that because if, you know, if I'm just doing that, it'll get kind of noisy. See? So that's something to think about. Yeah. Whatever it is. But anyway, I haven't played that in a long time. But you get the idea. So hopefully these things will help you a little bit in trying to develop your down picking technique and uh, palm muting and all the other things that go with that. So that's our Monday guitar motivation. Hopefully that'll get you through the week with some different things to think about. Everybody, stay positive keep practicing, help each other out. There's been a lot of really wonderful comments over here of some different ideas and techniques that you can utilize in your playing. And like I said, I don't have all the answers. I'm just telling you what works for me, okay? Uh, from not only being a player, but you know, teaching thousands of people. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I've got it all figured out. If somebody else has got Dozer, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that somebody else out there doesn't have a wonderful idea. So, you know, if you see some comments, you can always listen to somebody and say, hey, I never thought about that. Or thanks for letting me check out that particular guitar pick. I'll go, go see that and uh, anything that works for you. But remember, bottom line is what works for you, not what works for me or what works from, for somebody else, but what works for you. And sometimes it takes a little while to figure that out. All right, so everybody take care, stay positive. Oh, do me a favor. Uh, support the channel, whatever channel you're on, and always please head over to guitarzoom.com, which is where uh, all my guitar courses, the membership, we just have a, a brand new membership that has a bunch of my content on there. If you'd like to learn more from me, I would love to have you join the Guitar Zoom family. So all you need to do is head over to guitarzoom.com, uh, check out the membership, check out what we have over there, and I would really, really appreciate that. So everybody, take care, stay positive, 